see, I have been all over this nation, and in the old days, I traveled exclusively by bus. I don't know whether or not you've ever been on a bus, but sometime if you have a few years to kill, take a trip from New York to Los Angeles by bus. I walked like this for 92 days after the trip was over. That you get from reading old Crow billboard ads. Of course, we got some relief from the situation. That's when we made what is commonly referred to as a rest stop. They have the audacity to call them rest stops. Every 50 miles, brother, tired or not, you could be fast asleep. It's everybody out. Rest. You could be dead, they'd get you up to rest. And that's not all. It was one woman used to get tired between stops. <laughs> She didn't care where we were when she got tired, either. <laughs> Could be over a bridge or in the Mojave Desert. She'd holler, hold it, wait, I'm tired now. <laughs> That's how the Charleston came back. <laughs> and at every rest stop, something fantastic would take place. And I heard practically all of the stories that I've ever told on a nightclub floor or from a theater stage on this one bus trip in the spring of 1940. There was an Irishman on this bus by the name of Callahan. He looked something like this. Don't be alarmed, ma'am. The pleats go all the way down. <laughs> he got to calling him Crotchy Callahan for obvious reasons. He was a comfortable dresser, you see. And Callahan was one of these fellas who was Irish through and through. Well, mostly. About seven parts Irish and one part vodka. <laughs> Excuse me, Smirnoff. Anyhow, this one day he was really shining. I mean, he was lugging a load and driving in his brand new automobile. There's one thing about Crotchy Callahan, nobody drives his car but Callahan. And he was blind. <laughs> He couldn't see the dashboard. And he got into his car and he started to drive. And he drove in a short circle far through the night. He was lost. Somebody moved the town. <laughs> Finally he saw a taillight. He began following the taillight. He followed the taillight for quite some time. Finally the taillight came to a stop. But not Callahan. <laughs> He smashed his car and the other fellas too, then he gets out of his car very, very indignant. He said, what's the matter with you, wise guy? Don't you know you're supposed to put your arm out when you come to a stop? The fella says, what, in my own garage? <laughs> That's the story Jerry tried to get to, but he was cut off. As we were going through Nebraska, a baby was born on the bus to a couple who were married in Buffalo. <laughs> it was a long trip. And we got to tell them baby stories. And I don't believe there's a cuter story on earth, as far as baby stories go. There's the story told about Antonio Pachiclu for Paolo Garibaldi de Napoli, Jr., the two. Antonio is an American through and through with one failing, his misconception of the English language. The English language written, no matter how close to the paper, means nothing to him. His wife had presented him with a bouncing baby boy, highly elated, he named the child Tom. He said, that's going to be T-O-M, Tom. But when he received the birth certificate, naturally, the inscription read Thomas. And he didn't like that. He figured some wise guy was pulling a fast on him. Time being a great healer, he got over it. And now, two years later, again, by the grace of the deity, his wife presents him with a bouncing baby boy. And this is where the story starts. Antonio shall not name the new child until he can speak to the wise guy in charge of the birth certificates in the county building. And it sounds like this, if you can imagine, this is a telephone. He says, hello. Hello, operation. 
Hello, hey, by down, open up your house. Hello, operation. Operation, give me a circle of two, a couple of holes, another two, please. <laughs> no, you ain't got it. I said circle of two, a couple of holes, another two. Couple of holes, a hole, hole. That's a couple of holes, you know? And another one, too. No, no one, two. Another one, too. Hey, you know the two you got on the top? Put the same car on the bottom. <laughs> Hello? Tootsie Shores? <laughs> Who's asked for Tootsie Shores? I got him anyhow. Put up your end. I said, put up your end. You end, jiggle your one hook. I'm a jiggle man a couple of times. Put up your end. <laughs> Hello. Hey, operation. Hey, Goomba, what number I got to call? I got a circle of two, a couple of holes, another two. <laughs> you got in a place to make it quick. It's hot in the boots. They say it's hot in the boots. The telephone of boots is hot. <laughs> Hello? I got you, huh? <laughs> hey, Bajan, I want you to make a speak with a philosophy. Make out the border certificate. The border certificate. You got an afraid to push him up. He's hot in the boots. <laughs> Hello, that's to you? That's to me. Who's to me? Who's to you? <laughs> hey, a couple of years ago this time, my wife's got a little bambino. I'm going to say the name of Tommy. You put it down at Tomas. This one is the name of Jack. I don't want to have no trouble with you. <laughs> Traveling across this magnificent country of ours, day by day in every way, you will discover, my friends, that regardless of all the anti-anti-propaganda that you read about, that you hear about, even that that you see in minor and minute circumstances, just remember that this is still red-blooded, God-fearing America. Being such, she is a charitable America. She is an America that's a corny America. She was founded upon corn, upon neighborliness, upon love of God and love of man. This is a nation that is thriving because it lives in a dream when it so desires. When it's necessary to live in reality, it does so. Unfortunately, our realities have always been bloody realities, war. But we are happier in our dreams. We are a corny people who sing corny songs. But we are a charitable people. Open your hearts to your fellow man. If God has given you the use of your senses and your limbs, you are a very lucky fellow. You don't need any money at all. And if you think that I am saying this while I am sitting on a big bank account, I have a tall flash for you. I am more in debt today than ever I was when first I was floundering and begging for a career. But I still sing corny songs because I believe them. You believe them too. You'll never have a sick day as long as you live. Give to this cause muscular dystrophy. They need you very badly. And sing this kind of song. The world belongs to everyone the best things in life they're free hey the stars belong to everyone they shine right there for you and for me count the flowers in the spring hey listen to the birds that sing sunbeams that shine they're yours and they're mine Hey, love can come to anyone. Oh, the best things in life are free. Yes, the best things in our lives, they're free. Great. 
Thank you very much, Danny. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you right now.